Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this video is going to be an introduction to Perl. So in the previous video, I did do an introduction to Raku, um, which you can find over there at devnursery.com. What I want to do is do an introduction to Perl. So let me go open up my Perl folder. And let me just talk a little bit about Perl. Okay, and why I mentioned Raku in the same sentence, because what happened is that Perl is a long time language. It was a language that was initially created for like terminal scripting. So in, in that regard, from what I hear, it's still probably one of the best languages for that particular purpose. Like if you're just trying to look for a language that's gonna make doing scripting, system scripting much easier and succinct, um, Perl is great. Perl was, became so popular at one point that it was used to create full-blown back-end applications, even though it was never really created for that purpose, and expanded from there. Now, as other languages that kind of handled that kind of application better, Perl lost popularity, but Perl still used, still great for purposes like cybersecurity. Uh, a lot of time, anything, anytime where you really have to work a lot with strings, Perl is probably going to be sort of one of the strongest languages as far as like just doing interesting things with strings and doing them in as little code as possible. Um, but maybe a little, because what, what, what really what Perl tries to do is tries to allow you to do a lot with a very little syntax, which is great when you're trying to do something like one line, aka like terminal scripting, you're trying to just run something in a, in a line of code, but can be kind of hard to read when you're doing it in sort of like trying to do it in a more verbose, readable fashion. So what happened is that later on, but Perl became a language that was used to build full applications. And then eventually they came out with Perl 6. Perl 6 was a version of Perl that changed a lot of the rules, breaking changes, think from like, think like Angular 1 to Angular 2. Um, and there was a huge sort of fight within the community. And basically what happened is that the people who preferred Perl 5 have decided to kind of continue developing Perl as Perl. And those who enjoyed Perl 6 and wanted to continue developing that sort of alternate version, they renamed it Raku, and now it's like a separate language. So they're very similar. A lot of the basic ideas are very, are there, but syntactically they are fairly different. And I'll point out some of those differences as we go through uh, Perl. So I'm just going to create a new file. Okay, so we'll just say uh, 101.pl. PL is the Perl extension. And for example, like if I want to print some text, it's print a. Okay, if I wanted to do it in a Perl, it's say in, in Raku. Uh, there's also some issues like, can I put a space after the word print? Things like that. But now I can just run this just like. And another really cool thing about using Perl is that if generally if you have like a Linux system, Perl comes installed already. Like you don't have to like install Perl. It's not like Raku or Python or Ruby or Node where you have to like set up your dev environment. It's there out of the box. So it's, so in the case of, hey, you want to automate some things on your computer? Why not learn Perl and customize your environment a little bit with Perl and use Perl for scripting? Because it's, it's there. It's already available to you out of the gate. And it has some built-in functionality with Vim if you do a lot of work in the terminal. So it's useful because it's available and so why not so i just type in perl 101.pl and i see i get hey so nothing too 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 kind of too hard to understand there i mean you've seen that in like python now what's pretty interesting is the way you declare variables essentially there's like three prefixes so like a dollar sign prefixes the name of a scalar variable so this would be like a number. This could be a string. And this could be a Boolean. Okay. And let me just see here. I'm not quite sure whether Booleans are true, so we'll just find out the whole the old school way. Okay, so let's print these. So let's print um, num, or actually here we can just do this. We can print a string, and we can actually just interpolate right out of the gate, kind of like PHP. So I can say like num, stir, and I have a feeling that probably like the fact that you can do this in PHP is something that was it was borrowed from Perl because I think Perl was bigger before PHP got big. Bool. 
Okay, so I could do something like that. And let's just run it. Okay, so five, hello world, true. Okay, cool. So that works for me. Now, let me just try something out. If I did that uppercase true, it would just treat it as a string. So I guess works. Interesting. I don't. I think it's just treating it as a string um, because I don't think you necessarily need strings, quotation marks for strings in some in some situations. So that's pretty cool. Okay, that you can do that. Um, so that's one cool thing you can do. Another cool thing you can do is you can take in huge blocks of text without quotation marks like this. I can say okay, uh, dollar text equals, and I do this symbol and then I put in like what is it looking for so we'll just say end okay so it's gonna look for n and I think I need to put quotation marks on this semicolon and then after this I can just type in a bunch of text mm. I can do it across multiple lines doesn't matter what I type it's just gonna keep doing it till like, it sees the word end. And once it sees the word end, it's done. And now I can print text. Because all of this will have been saved in this variable. Oh, one second, let's see here, line the right, here print. Uh, let's see how I did it over. Let's take a look at my previous example. I guess I have to interpolate it. So let's do that and try this again. And there you go. You see all of that gets saved as a variable in the text. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I always know that when I see the dollar sign, it's some sort of scalar value. So think numbers or strings or floats. Okay, pretty straightforward. Then there's at for array. So we'll say at r equals, and that should be, I think in parentheses actually for this. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I can print, and this part is kind of, not initially intuitive, but it makes sense. If I want to access an individual value from the array, the individual value is a scalar type. So I would do R0. Okay, so just like any array, you would just start with the zero index and work your way up. But because when I'm referring to the array as a whole, I'm using the at. When I'm referring to the individual items in the array, I use a dollar sign. This is actually different in Raku. This is one of the big differences in Raku. In Raku, the array would just always use at. So in this case, it would be at in both situations if it was Raku. In Perl, again, when your individual elements are still scalar, so use a dollar sign. So let's just run that code. And see, so we get, you see the one right there. Okay. But that's how an array would essentially work. Okay. And then far as like an ob, like let's say JavaScript objects, the key value pairs would be through percentages. Okay. So I say percentage. And that's referred to as like a hash. And we can just say, and that's going to be in, I think it's still in parentheses, but except you do something like this. You do, um, you can do like name equals, or no, actually name is Alex Merced. And you have to prefix, you have to prefix it with that dash. If not, then you have to use quotes. Then it would be like age. 35 okay and then the way that should work is that I should do once again I need a dollar because I'm going to access one value so it's one value out of the hash hash and then I use curly brackets to define which one I'm look accessing and I use name like so I shall use single quotes And let's try that out. Do, 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 near print, sign hash. Let's go 
take a quick look at the pearl ashes that I use that wrong possibly ashes just data yeah that's pretty much what we did again the same hacks I was using was from right over here okay oh I see you'd still use the dash so let's change that and make that dash name and does that work still didn't quite like it do do do, do. Oh, I, maybe it's because I didn't put the semicolon. Yep, there it goes. It's just missing semicolons. Because Perl's an older language, so it cares about semicolons. That's a thing. Okay, and then, like, functions aren't called functions. They're called subroutines. But otherwise, they work the kind of the same way. So add one x return x plus one. So if I were to sit there and say num equals add one five, and then we said print num, that should get us six. One well, x. Oh, actually, I think I still need to use these again, like kind of like PHP. No, not enough arguments for a main. Add one. Add one one to line five. Here five. Hmm. Let's go take a look. Subroutines. Subroutines. List of arguments. Sub hello. Okay. Do 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 do. Um. Item. Do 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 do. Oh, I see getting the arguments is a little bit more tricky than I assumed. Okay, I think they do fix that in Raku and make it more straightforward in Raku. Um, so the first, let's just make it simple. Return six. Okay. And yes, yeah, so you create the function, but you have to do you have to play. But basically, there is no parentheses to put the the list of arguments, which is fun. Okay, let's see, examine how that would work. Body of the subroutine, following up list of arguments. Did we get that? Argument, but they can be accessed inside a function using a special array. Thus, the first argument would be, ah, okay. So we'd have to do this. Uh, let's take a look. Ha, I see. Okay, so we like we return underscore zero plus one. That's a silly way of doing it. Okay, because all the arguments are always in this array here. So now if I pass in five, five would be that zero. And let's see what we get. Do we get six? Yes, we get six. Okay, so that works. So basically you've seen kind of the basic idea there, how you declare a variable. How do you do arrays and key value pairs? How do you create a function? It's a little bit different in Perl. I wouldn't say Perl definitely has a syntax. It's like not as familiar to me as other ones, but it's not quite as a departure as let's say like a Haskell or a Clojure, uh, where you are doing things quite a bit differently or OCaml uh, than you would necessarily in like a JavaScript, Ruby, Perl, uh, Py I mean, JavaScript, Ruby, Python, PHP kind of syntax. Um, but with that, I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it at that. Again, there's a lot of differences between this and Raku, which is why they're considered two different languages now. Um, but Perl's not going anywhere. Perl's been used for a long time. There's still a lot of legacy code Perl out there, even though it's maybe not not being used for web servers so much. It's still used 
for a lot of like cybersecurity string manipulation, validation, uh, scripting. Um, you know, it's still very much part of different developers' toolkits. And like other ones, it does have like a place where you look for like libraries. It's called CPAN. Okay, the Comprehensive Perl Archive Network. So here's where you can find like different libraries um, to do stuff with Perl. Like if you want to like kind of kind of like npm or whatnot. Um, and there's another version of this for Raku. Let me go look that up. CPAN for Raku. The Raku modules directory, which works the same way, except you know, again it's specifically for Raku modules. Okay, 